All right then, gang, so now we have this side draw in place. What I'd like to do is output a list of links. Now, in our case, there's only two links to output because we only have two pages, but nevertheless, it's still going to be a list. And I want to take this opportunity to talk about list components in Material UI. So let's go to our code. And the first thing I'm going to do at the top of the layout file is import a few list components. So the first one is the list component. This is like a wrapper for every list that we create. If you think of this as being a bit like HTML, it would be the UL tag or it would be the OL tag, the thing that surrounds the list. Then we have the list item components. And again, if you think of this as being a bit like HTML, it would be the LI tag. So this is the wrapper for each list item. And then down here we have two components and these components are for content inside the list item. So if we want to use an icon inside the list item, we'd use the list item icon component. If we want to output text, we'd use the list item text component. All right. So let's give this a little bit of a whirl just to create some kind of dummy list. First of all, then we'll create a list for our links. So. The first thing we need is the list component to surround everything and then a list item for each item. So inside the list item, say I want to output some text. Well, I can say list item text like so. And it could be self closing because we don't have to put the content in between opening and closing tags. Instead, we can say here, the primary text is going to be equal to something. So for example, hello. So if I, copy this and paste it down here. I'm going to save that and preview. We can see two list items. If I add more, there's obviously going to be more list items. All right, so that's basically how to create a list. But what I want to do is create a list of links. So let's work on that. Now, instead of hard coding a list right here and a list item for each link that we're going to have, instead, what I'd like to do is create a bit of data, not state, just a normal constant, which is going to store our list items. And these list items are basically going to be an array. So I'll call it menu items. And this array will hold the different menu items we ultimately want to see in the sidebar over here. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is twofold. First of all, we're not bloating our template down here with hard coded stuff. We're just going to cycle through this list using a map method and it just makes it a little leaner down here. And secondly, if you have more menu items in the future, I think it's easier to add them this way, just adding them to this array because we're just cycling through that array down here later. All right. So each list item is going to be represented by an object and each object will have a text property. That's the text we want to see for the link. So I'm going to say my notes for the first one. It's also going to have an icon property, each one. And that's the icon we want to show to the left of each link. So in this case, I want an icon called subject outlined like so. I'm going to click on that and it's going to auto import it here for me. And also I want to give this a color of secondary. So that should be the purplish color. All right. So we also need a path property. Oops, let's go to the next line path. And this is basically the routes. And in this case, it's just going to be forward slash because if we go to forward slash, we get this notes component. All right. So that's the first one. I then want to duplicate this and add it in right here. So the second link, the text for that is going to be create notes. And the icon that I'm going to use is going to be add circle outline. And it's this one right here outlined. It should auto import that for me at the top. Yep. All right. And the color is still secondary. This time the path is going to be forward slash create. Okay. So there's our menu items. Now we just need to cycle through these down here. All right then. So first of all, let me do a little comment right here. And this comment is going to say list hyphen links, just so we know what content is below this. All right. And then I'm going to do a list component. First of all, remember that wraps our list items. Now I want to map through our data and output a list item for each one. So we're going to use the map method on the menu items. So menu items dot map. And then we take in each item as we iterate this and we return a bit of template for each one. Now we need to return a list item for each one. And that's going to have a key prop. So let me add this key prop on. The key is going to be equal to the item dot text because the text is unique in each one. If it was the same, then we couldn't do this. 
All right then, so inside the list item, I want two things. I want an icon, first of all, which is gonna be the icon specified here in each object. So let's add that in. So we use the list item icon component for this. And then inside this, all we have to do is output item dot icon. And that remember is the icon component right here, okay? So we're outputting that right here. The next thing I want is the text. So we'll do list item text and we need the primary prop on this because it's gonna be the primary text. We'll set that equal to the item dot text. All right, so let's just give this a quick preview to see what it looks like over here. And we don't actually see anything yet. Let me refresh. Nope. So. Ah, we need to save the file. So once we've saved it, now we can see this list of items. So we have this nice icon on the left. It styles all this for us. And we have my notes and create notes as well. So then, first of all, I want to add another prop to the list item right here. And that prop is going to be the button prop. Now, the reason I've done this is so when we hover over these, it looks like we can click them. So it styles it that way. Obviously, at the minute, as we click them, nothing is happening. But what I'd like to do is redirect the user to the pages that they click on. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can add in an on click event handler. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to set it equal to a function which is going to fire. Now, inside this function, I want to redirect the user. And to do that, we're going to use a built-in hook in React called use history. So let me scroll up to the top. I'm going to say const history is equal to use history, like so. I'm going to enter onto that to auto import it up here. And then we can use a method on this history constant now to redirect the user. And that method is the push method. And all we do is pass in a route that we want to push to. And remember that route is stored on the path property of the item. So I can just say here, item dot path. And if I save this now and try this out, I'm going to click on create and we see this form. If I click on my notes, we see the notes again. Awesome. So this is all working. Now there's one more thing I want to do, and that is to create some kind of active class so that if we're on this page right here, this is somehow highlighted or styled differently to show us that we're on this page. And if we're on this page, this one is styled a bit differently. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is create an active class in our styles up here. So let me do this active. And all we're going to do is give this a different background color and it's going to be F4, F4, F4. So we're very light gray. So this is basically going to be the class of any link that's active. So if I'm on the My Notes page, it's going to have that very light gray color in the background and likewise for this one. So how do we dynamically apply this to one of the list items if we're currently on that page? Well, we need a way to find out if we're on that page. And to do that, we can use another hook. And this is called the Use Location hook built into React. So I'm going to say const location is equal to use location like so press enter to auto import that and it comes from let's have a look where is it use location right here from react router dom okay so now we can use this to determine what page we're on and dynamically output a class name to the list item so let me do this i'll do this at the bottom down here we'll say class name is equal to something now then we need to check is the location path name equal to the path provided by the path object. So what I can say is, okay, take the location, which we get, remember, by using the use location hook, then dot path name. So this is basically the route that we're currently on. And I want to see, is that equal to the current item we're iterating right here, dot path. Now then, if this evaluates to true, we're going to use this question mark here because we're using a ternary operator. If it evaluates to true, then we're going to output the value on the left side over here, which is going to be classes dot active. Now we do a colon. And if it's false, we're going to output this other value, which is going to be null. So this basically says evaluate this. If it's true, then we're currently on that page. And so it has the active class. If it's false, then we don't give it the active class. It's just null. So if I save this now and preview over here, we can see since we're on the home page, it gets this background color. If we go to create, it gets that background color. So now we know which page we're on, even if it's already extremely obvious because of the content. So 
that is the list done for the draw. Next, I want to return to this function up here, make styles, and talk a little bit more about that.